Hello, my name is Thane and I like to experiment with all kinds of AI technologies. In this video we shall be taking another look at Midjourney's latest version 6 and its features. There is a link in the description to the part 1 video of this series, so go watch that as well, if you want to take a look at some of the really basic features in version 6. But let's start right where we left off. One of the really big new things with version 6 is that you can now get text to appear in your images. Previously, it was really difficult to do that, and you basically always ended up with gibberish that never matched what you wanted. But now things have improved significantly with version 6. It is not yet 100% accurate, but you can get some good results occasionally. All you have to do is put the text you want in the image in quotation marks in your prompt. Previously, Quotation marks were simply just symbols for Midjourney, but version 6 actually recognizes them and treats them differently. Just like curly braces are used for permutations. Double colon followed by a number is used for multiprompting. And two dashes in front of certain words or letters are used for parameter syntax. So now on to some of my observations that I have noticed so far with this new feature. I think the bigger struggle to generate words in the image is with more obscure words or phrases. For example, in my latest video I wanted to write dash dash v6 and dash dash v6.0, but after several attempts, it became clear that it gets close, but never exactly right. And the reason being that my text was not something that is commonly written. But more recognized words do get better results. Longer sentences may also be a bit difficult to get right, simply due to the amount of words that may get scrambled more easily. So it's possible, but be prepared for a lot of trial and error. Single words may actually work best at the moment, because the letters tend to turn out in the right order most of the time. Sometimes using the dash dash style raw may help if your text isn't showing up correctly. And to get your image right, you can direct it by telling it how the text has been created, like typed, written, or other phrases like that. You can also direct the medium like on a sign or billboard, paper, or post-it. Your creativity is the limit, but again, there is a need for a lot of trial and error. But there is a potential now to create better logos, or even entire new fonts. And I do realize that there are plenty of AI tools out there already that can do this better and faster at this point, but for Midjourney, this is a really big leap forward. Now let's look at some older features and what they do in version 6. First up is the chaos feature with dash dash chaos or dash dash c and a value from 0 to 100. The default value is usually 0. But the higher you go with it, the more variety you will see in the outputs. So basically, whenever you don't clearly know what you are looking for, this will give you different and unexpected options quicker. For this test I chose the prompt, rabbit made of velvet in a desert oasis. I used the exact same seed number for all the images I generated. And I chose the chaos values, 0, 10, 50 and 100. Obviously there is other options between as well, but I wanted to showcase how it goes from nothing to extreme. It's been a while since I have looked at chaos parameter like this, but to me it feels like the 0 and 10 images are really close. And also 50 and 100 look kind of similar in some of the images. It does seem to stray from the prompt quite a bit, with the higher chaos values. And then the exact same thing, but with raw style. Again, I feel like the 0 and 10 are really close, as are 50 and 100 partly with some differences. And I see the Chaos 10 colorful rabbit continuing as a colorful tree in Chaos 50 and kind of a colorful totem in Chaos 100. But the straying from the prompt is very strong with higher Chaos values. So my recommendation would be to stay in the lower values if you want to see things that you actually prompted. Another really similar parameter in my opinion is the dash dash weird or dash dash w. As the name suggests, it controls how unusual the images will look. The accepted values go from 0 to 3000. And the default is again, 0, meaning that this parameter is not normally used if you don't specifically mention it in your prompt. 
So let's see how version 6 behaves with this parameter. This time I used the prompt. Chair carved from sandstone in a mystical foggy valley. I have again used the same seed number for better comparison. And this time I selected the breakpoints of 0, 300, 1000, and 3000. The images didn't come out as the prettiest, but they are sufficient to show what Weird does. Weird 0 represents the default, and it looks different from the other bunch. I also see three sets of images repeating across Weird 300, Weird 1000, and Weird 3000. When this feature came out with version 5, I didn't know what the purpose of this was, other than to create really ugly images. And I believe that the same is the case with version 6. Raw style looks actually much better for most of the images. We can see some images again repeating across Weird 300, Weird 1000, and Weird 3000. I feel like they look somewhat like very subtle results. So across both default style and raw style, I don't think you even need to go very high with the values, you can get similar results at 300 already. And although the raw style doesn't actually look as weird or unexpected to me with version 6, I don't think I will be using this feature in the future. If you are into this kind of experimentation, you can also combine the two. Let me know in the comments below if you use chaos or weird and why. I would really like to know if I am missing something here with the usefulness of these features. There is another feature that has been around for ages and is somewhat similar to the features we have looked at. The only difference is that it is sometimes actually useful. It is the stylize feature with dash dash stylize or dash dash s going from 0 to 1000. The default for it is 100, so you actually use it in every prompt. It is basically for controlling how heavily the Midjourney's default style is applied to your images. Let's look at it in action with version 6. I used the prompt, birdhouse painted with colorful nebula motifs in a cherry blossom grove, and I chose the breakpoint 0, 100, 250 and 1000. The differences for this prompt look really subtle actually. This came out in a photographic style, so there may be different results with a more painted look. The default look tends to vary from photographic to painted with version 6. But zero is indeed the ugliest selection of images. There is only a tiny difference between 100 and 250. And 1000 does have significant beautification added on top there. So in contrast to weird and chaos, this parameter makes images more beautiful instead of ugly, and now the raw style. It looks very similar to the default style in the case of this prompt. Because raw style tends to be overall skewed towards photorealism. But there does seem to be slight differences to default style. Stylize 0 still looks like the ugliest. And Stylize 1000 has some beautification on it, but I feel that it's less than with the default style. Along the way while testing these things, I have got the feeling that the default style and raw styles are more connected now. Meaning that when you use the same seed number, the default images and raw images are actually using the same seed space. So as another experiment I overlaid the default style images on top of the raw style images with 50% opacity. And this shows clearly that the compositions are really similar. Stylize 0 seems to have the biggest differences, but there are grids that are nearly identical. There are some more features available for version 6, like dash dash tile or the image blending. I may make a video about those features again in the future, if I figure out how to best showcase the difference they have now in version 6. But I think tile works, just like it is supposed to, and it makes your images have seamless edges that connect to each other. And image blending is supposed to work better now. But I haven't been experimenting with that so much that I would have any useful tips for you beyond what I have already shared with you in a previous video I made when the feature was released. Anyway, I thank you so much for watching, consider subscribing to my channel if you like this kind of content, and let's continue prompting.